I'm Marge Kinney. Welcome to the Marge Kinney Art Show. Today we're going to talk a little bit about contrast. Many of the most excellent paintings that you'll see in exhibitions are very, very well painted with definite lights and definite darks. And sometimes you may think that you have it perfect when you're on location, and the next day the colors have darkened and you have to repaint them to make them lighter. I'll show you a couple of examples. This has dark tones and light tones, and it finishes up rather nicely. Now this one is what I'm going to work on to show you the difference between how we can make it a little bit darker and a little bit lighter to have the contrast stronger to see if we don't make a better painting. All right, here we go. My favorite brushes of all times are this number 12 filbert with the rounded top. I enjoy painting whole paintings sometimes with just one brush. Another favorite is the flat, and this is a number, 10, a number 16 flat, and it's really easy to use. And a little larger filbert. Again, you can see that it has a rounded top, and these can take me a long, long way. So I'm going to start first today with putting in darks and just making the darks a little bit darker. I had just finished um, making this just as a general uh, initial start, but not to be the whole painting. And sometimes I'll do that with acrylic. Right now I'm working with oil. So it just um, gives me kind of a start and then I can refine it. You'll find that when you're doing rocks, that the rocks go in so many different directions as the layers have been put on over centuries of time. So if you kind of follow some of those without getting too detailed, uh, it helps create a realism. Now this little cypress happens to have a pot that it sits in. So, so I'm just going to bring out that pot a little bit here. As the rock gets closer to the water, it gets darker. It's rather easy to tell why. That's because it's wet. And it may not be wet at the moment, but when the tide comes in or the next wave comes in, it does certainly get darker. So again, we're, we're aiming for contrast. As a rock gets farther in the distance, we also want to make sure that it doesn't, it, while it's dark, it's got to be uh, muted somewhat because it is more distant. The other thing that make it, that it make it more distant is that it gets smaller and less important. While I'm not using any reference material at this time, uh, I remember that there were many, many light areas too where the sun was hitting. So I will remember those as I paint. I'm gonna add a little bit of white just to gray down some of these areas. Okay, moving across, there were some, some evergreens and other junipers and cypress that were coming across this scene. Cypresses 
tend to have very crooked branches. I was standing at a wall above this picture and so I saw both greens but I also saw a lot of jetsam floatsam as it came close to the edge of the the beach. Notice how I'm holding the brush. I'm not holding it like a pencil. This gives me too much of an exact line. If I go like this, I can scrub it using the, the edge of my brush. Right now I'm putting raw umber and a little bit of yellow ochre. Where it got light, I'm going to throw in a little bit of flesh. There's nothing like having a beach have a little bit of a, a peachy tone to it, and then you, you shadow it with a gray violet. I can make that with cerulean blue and raw umber and white. A little bit of red in there. Now I'm going to use some Prussian blue and some sap green and white to make the color of the ocean. To make it in the distance, I'm going to add a little bit more white. A little bit more white. It's turning a little bit too dark for me. Another thing that happens mostly all the time to me is that I can see this ocean heading down south. So you need to take your brush like this and measure at the top with your thumb against the edge of the ocean. And if I go like this, look how far off it is. So this has to actually come up to here. Isn't that amazing? But you'll find it happens all the time. It'll happen regularly. I'm going to throw in a little bit of a cerulean. I have to have the ocean go a little bit above or a little bit below that rock because I don't want to have it exactly kissing the top of the rock. That would not look nice. Water changes in color from back to front. You've probably seen that many times. I'm going to throw a little wave around this rock so I 
go. The reason that rocks have an oval shape is that it's actually a continuation of the mountain. So the rock is still going under, so the, the ocean is just circling around it. The day I was there, the, the, the ocean was doing so many wonderful things that I took many, many photographs. The water would bounce over the rocks, it'd come in between the rocks, it would do just about everything. About the time I'd think, oh, I could paint that, the water would change, of course. So we'll just make a little splash coming up here, just because it did that many times. And my whole idea today is to show you how you can make a picture come more alive. So even if I don't completely finish it right now, it'll help you see how you can make something look um, pretty exciting by adding um, contrast. You can see where I need two puddles of white because white is, it can get dirty when you're mixing it with one color and then you need to still have a clean white to go with the next. All right, I'm adding white, uh, yellow ochre, a little of the flesh tone, and some burnt umber to make a caramel color sky. My paint seems a little thick, so I'm going to add a little bit of medium. It's just an oil painting medium that smooths it out a little bit. I could make this even thinner to make it just a more or less of a glaze. The blue does not hurt as a background because usually you use a complement on the color wheel. That's the color directly across from the color that you're putting on top. You use that on the bottom to make the color more beautiful that ends up on the top. I'm covering the tree because I can come back over that in a minute. I don't want to have lines particularly showing, so I've got to go in different directions. Then I can take a larger brush 
and with a towel, Yes, see that with a towel, I just kind of mesmerize the sky. I actually want some of the blue to show through. All right, now I'm ready to go back with the dark shade for the tree. One thing about cypress is that they have a lot of branches that go outward and very little tiny straggly branches. Now I'm using sap green, and cypresses tend to go flat. Their, their branches extend outwards, and they're flat on the surface. They blow in the wind. It's the wind forces the trunks usually towards the land, and then the leaves still go outwards towards the ocean. They're so beautiful, and they feel so lonely. Just, they're so wonderful. <laughs> they really are. Now, so far I've painted the profile, but I really need to paint some coming across the front. So I have to cross the trunk like this to make it a three-dimensional tree. Otherwise, it would look like a skeleton. Usually trees are a little bit lighter across the top, so I'm going to give this one a little bit of yellow and a little yellow ochre in there. I'll lighten it up a little bit. And there's actually a secondary tree that's just kind of keeping it company along the side. And there is some grass along the hill. Well, hopefully, hopefully we have more contrast and we've established more contrast than what you saw at the beginning of this video. So I may do a little bit more refining on it, but that's to give you an idea of what this is all about. Well, I never know exactly what I'm going to get. But this has been a lot of fun painting with you. I hope you've enjoyed painting with me. And I think that there's probably still going to be a couple more sit-ins with this painting to bring up that contrast even more. But I hope that you've learned along with me today how changing the colors of the sky or the land or whatever can make a difference. Thanks for joining me.